To recap, in previous videos, we have talked about neuron and perceptron learning algorithm. We did a training of an epoch one of an end truth table, but that training is for a single perceptron. In this particular video, we will discuss multi-layer neural network. A multi-layer neural network is a multi-layer perceptron and it involves one or more hidden layers. The network consists of an input layer of a source neuron, at least one middle or hidden layer of computational neurons, and one output layer of computational neurons. Input signals from the input layer will be propagated in a forward direction on a layer by layer basis. This is an example of a multi-layer neural network with four layers. So this is layer one, two, three, and four. The layer number two and number three, they are hidden layers. And the weights and output of these layers are hidden from us. A hidden layer hides its desired output. Neurons in the hidden layers cannot be observed through the input or output behavior of the network. There is no obvious way to know what is the desired output of the hidden layer should be. So for example, for a single perceptron, we, we want to contrast this with a single perceptron. So a single perceptron might have two input, X and Y, and then one output, a capital Y. So if you have a truth table for an end operation, for example, so we have two input, a single output. If the input is both zero, the output should be zero. However, if the output of that particular iteration is one, we say that this is not the same as the desired output. However, for hidden layers, the desired output of the hidden layers, it is not known to us. Therefore, we can say that it is self-determined by the layer itself. What we can see is the final result in the output layer at the last layer and whether it is nearing convergence or not. But what is happening in the middle layer is a black box. It is possible to have more than two hidden layers. Yes, commercial A and N sometimes have three or four layers, including one or two hidden layers. Each layer can contain from 10 to 1,000 neurons. And experimental neural networks, usually involving supercomputers, may have five or even six layers, including three or four hidden layers, and they utilize millions of neurons. But normally, Practical applications use only three layers because each additional layer will increase the computational burden exponentially. This is an example of a question you might find in test or exam. The concept is still similar to a single layer perceptron. We are simply computing it into several layers. This ANN has three layers and we have five neurons with two inputs and one output. So the learning rate that is given is 0 0.5. The activation function is um, y equals to zero if sum is lesser or equal to four and y equals to one if sum is bigger than four. And this is the training data. And if we convert it in the form of a table, it will look like this. So we have um, two input. And then we have the output. The first iteration is when the out, when the input is both one, the output should be one. And when the input is both zero, the output should be zero. So now let's take a look at how we can train this particular network. When we want to answer, a good habit to have is to arrange all the information in a table. So this is for the first iteration, and you can see this is the input one and one. 
the desired output for the first iteration is 1. Okay, um, the weight for neuron 1, the weight 1 is 1 over here. And the, the second weight for neuron 1 is this. The weight for neuron 2 also have two different weights. And neuron 2 weight 1 is this one mapped in this cell over here. And the neuron a neuron 2 neuron 2's weight 2 is this one. So these are the boxes that we need to fill. Computing neuron 3, neuron 4 and getting the final output of um, iteration 1. Okay, to calculate the value of neuron 3, we just apply the first we need to calculate the sum for neuron 3. Okay, just like we did previously, x1 weight 1. Okay, so neuron 3 would be, would have the value of the sum of neuron 1 weight 1 because you see the arrows coming in into neuron 3 comes from neuron 1 weight 1 and neuron 2 weight 1. Therefore, to calculate that is x1 w1 plus x2 w2. So x1 is 1. Neuron 1 weight 1 is also 1. We want to sum it with the input that comes from neuron 2 which is 1. And multiply that with the weight over here, which is neuron 2 weight 1, this one. So, 1 times 2. Okay, 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 times 2 is 2. 1 plus 2 is 3. 3 is lesser than 4, therefore, y is 0. So, the value of neuron 3 gets the value of 0. Okay, we have gotten the value for neuron 3, which is this value. Now we want to calculate the value for neuron 4. So in order for us to do that, we need to calculate the sum of the values and weight coming in into neuron 4. So if you can notice, there are two arrows coming in into neuron 4, this arrow and this arrow. The first arrow comes from neuron 1 and the second arrow comes from neuron 2. So now let's take a look at the value from the first arrow first. In first arrow, the input is 1 and the weight is 2. Therefore, we plug in the values 1 times 2. Now, for the second arrow, the second arrow comes from neuron 2 and the input value is 1 and the weight is 1. So we plug in the values 1 times 1. So 2 plus 1, we get the value of 3. 3 is lesser than 4. Therefore, y is also 0 at neuron 4. The final neuron that needs to be computed is the output layer or neuron 5. And in order for us to do that, we need to look at the arrows coming in into neuron 5. And if you notice, the arrows coming in into neuron 5 comes from two sources. This is the first arrow and this is the second arrow. The first arrow comes from neuron 3. So the input is 0 and the weight is 2. So we plug in the values over here, 0 times 2. And the second arrow comes from neuron 4, where the value of neuron 4 is 0 and the weight is 1. We have to remember the value 0 from neuron 4 and 0 from neuron 3 uh, were computed previously in the previous slides. 
uh, at the start of the training, the values were not available. Okay, so going back into arrow 2, the input is 0 and the weight is 1. And we sum it, we get the value of 0, which is lesser than 4. Therefore, y is 0 over here. This 0 is not equal to the desired output. Therefore, some weight training will need to happen after this. Since the error is not 0, the weight must be adjusted. So we will apply the perceptron training algorithm in this problem. So the weight that we must adjust, we will start with the weights for neuron 1. So there are two weights, weight 1 and weight 2. So for weight 1, for iteration 2, will be 1 that comes from the previous iteration. The training or the learning rate, which is 0 0.5 as established in the initial slide. The value of input 1, which is 1, and error, error is 1. Therefore, we get the value of 1.5. So we plug in the value of 1.5 over here. Now, let's do the training for weight 2. For weight 2, the weight of the previous iteration, which is iteration 1, is 2. And the training rate is 0 0.5. Input 1 is 1. And error is 1. Once we plug in all these values, we get the value of 2.5. Let's continue with training the weights for neuron 2. So neuron 2 has two weights. This is weight 1 and this is weight 2. For weight 1, we start with the value of the previous iteration, which is 2. And then the learning rate is 0 0.5. The input is 1, error is 1. Once we calculate, we get the value of 2.5. So we plug in the value of 2.5 over here. Moving on for weight 2, the previous weight for weight 2 is 1. And the learning rate is 0 0.5. Input is 1 and error is 1. Plug in the values, we get 1.5 and we put it over here. Now we start iteration 2 with new input and the adjusted weight. So where does this new input comes from? From the training data. So for the training data, for input 0 for x1 and input 0 for x2, the desired output is 0. We have brand new weight value that we have trained in previous slides. So we now need to start calculating the values for neuron 3, neuron 4, and neuron 5 again to finish iteration 2. Let's start by calculating the value of neuron 3. So neuron 3 has two arrows coming in. This is arrow 1 and this is arrow 2. Arrow 1 comes, free, comes in from neuron 1 and the input of neuron 1 is 0. The weight, this weight is 1.5. As for arrow, arrow 2, the input is 0 and the weight is 2.5. So we plug in the values, we get 0, which is lesser than 4, therefore y is 0. Neuron 3 gets the value of 0. Next, we will calculate the value for neuron 4. Neuron 4 also has two arrows coming in. This is arrow, arrow 1 and this is arrow 2. So arrow 1 uh, has the value of 0 with the weight of 2.5. So we plug in this weight over here. And for arrow 2 has the input value of 0 and the weight value of 1.5. So we plug in the values here. 0 is lesser than 4, therefore y is 0. And for k, 
gets the value of 0. The final neuron that needs to be computed is neuron 5. Neuron 5 has two arrows coming in. This is arrow 1 and this is arrow 2. For arrow 1, the input value is 0, the weight is 2. So we plug in the values. As for arrow 2, the input is 0 and the weight is 1. So we plug in the values here. You get once we sum it, we get the value of 0. 0 is lesser than 4. Therefore, the value of N5 or value of Y is 0. Because the desired output is also 0, 0 minus 0, there will be no adjustment to the weight. But since our training data has only two rules, we have finished Epoch 1. What are advantages and disadvantages of a multi-layer neural network? First of all, the advantage is it can perform tasks in which a linear program cannot perform. If you still remember the training of Perceptron, it can classify data that can be linearly separated. So if anything falls here, it belongs in class A. If anything falls here, it belongs in class B. So if you have something that is not a straight line, it cannot classify them. However, a multi-layer neural network can do that. But what is the disadvantage? The disadvantage is, the disadvantage is it requires long training time to reach conversion because it involves lots of layers. Therefore, in addition to requiring long training time, it also requires high computational power as compared to a single perceptron.